Charlotte State has new merchandise available. Every purchase goes right back to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mama Mia, Ola, uh uh uh, peace to y'all. Get off that stage, boy! Quit monkeying around! Welcome to the Fallen State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Don't forget to help us in the fight of uh, censorship. Thumbs up, ring the bell, and don't forget to subscribe. I have with me today Dr. Gabriel Selassie. That's correct. Amazing. He is an associate professor of history, religion, and African American studies at Los Angeles City College. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. How long have you been teaching at Los Angeles City College? Since 2005. Really? Yeah, I started teaching at the college level in 2000. So I was hired full time in 2005. So it's been about 19 years since I've started teaching. I went to Los Angeles City College for one year when I first moved to LA. Yeah, so many people have gone to City College, right? I bump into people all the time who have. Yeah, Quite to, an amazing institution. It used to be a very good junior college. Yeah, absolutely. It's had its ups and downs over the number of years, but it still performs miracles. A lot of Mexicans are there now, right? <laughs> well, there are a lot of people who come from south of the border, yeah. right, whose heritage, mostly Americans, but whose heritage. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And so um, when, you, when you teach history, what are you teaching about? Well, history about what? Well, primarily at, typically at community colleges, what we do is we try to teach what we call the baseline history courses. So we give students a pretty decent overview of American history. So we generally begin at the founding, whenever that date is for a particular professor. I usually begin in um, at what we call the age of discovery around the 14th century, and then I move students through um, the founding of the nation and through the Civil War and then the second half of the course we start from what happens after the Civil War and move up to the present time. And how about religion and African studies? Are you a Christian? Um, I am a Rastafarian. So oh, a, Rastafari. a Rastafarian? Yes. That's the people that smoke pot, right? Um, yes, some Rasta smoke a lot of ganja. Oh yeah? Yeah, not all do, but Do you smoke do. pot? I do partake in ganja every now and then. So ganja mean pot? Well, yeah, you can call it pot. It's called so many different things, right, to so many people. I prefer the term ganja myself. And so is that like a religion? Oh, absolutely. It is a sacrament. Oh, and so when you smoke the pot, what are you sacrificing? Not sacrificing or anything. Or making a sacrament too. Well, what, what it hopes what we hope that ganja will do for you is what we call it opens up your liberty, right? It puts you in touch with yourself. I mean, Bob Marley said it best is that when you smoke ganja, it reveals yourself to yourself, right? So that's primarily why most Rasta smoke ganja. Really? Yeah, it opens up your consciousness. And you, so you haven't smoked ganja at I all? did when I was younger. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, but... It didn't open me up. It made me nervous. <laughs> yeah, it does that to some people. <laughs> well, I just heard, um, um, what's his name, the, the singer, Nelson. He's no longer smoking ganja. Oh, right? yeah, that old right. white guy. Yeah, pretty much. I can't think his name. And so what have you discovered about yourself that you didn't know until you smoke uh, pot? Well, I think what it helps me to do is question a lot of the ideas that I have. I mean, one of the things that what Rastas like to do is we reason. So we like to throw out ideas and we like to question ideas, right? Our own assumptions about who we are as people, about the way that the world is constructed, governments, politics, anything is fair game. And one thing that I've really discovered by smoking ganja is that there are a lot of things that I do not know. So you think that you discover more by being high? Um, I think that it will help you to sort of lay open or lay bare some of your claims. Yeah, so I, I suppose in some small respects the answer to that might be yes. So what does the world look like when you're not high? What does the world look when I'm not high? Yeah. Um, I would say the world looks a fairly tough place for most people. 
When you're not high. When tough. you're not high. Yeah, the world, I mean, look at your daily lives. Like for most people, life is tough. And when you're high, what does the world look like? Um, it looks like that there's hope and possibilities for a better world. Amazing. Does a Rastafarian believe in God? Oh, absolutely. We believe in God. Well, why do you have to be high if you believe in God? Well, it's not that we have to be high to believe in God. It's sort of like it's it's a way of opening oneself. It's just like meditation, right? Meditation is a way to open up your self to higher things. So then why don't you just meditate rather than get high? I do meditate. And high? Not at the same time, no. So do you get high first and then meditate? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, um, I, I try to meditate at least 15 minutes a day. Oh, I see. Right. And so are you, were you born here in, the, in this country? Yes, I was born in uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. My parents oh. were teachers at a Navajo Indian school. And so what made you decide to become an Arastafarian? Um, I largely looked at around the world and I looked at my own religious background and I decided that I felt more comfortable expressing myself um, as a person who believed in the tenets of Rastafarianism. Oh, I see. And so were you a Christian prior to becoming? Yes, I was baptized as a Catholic. Oh, I see. And so were you raised by your father and mother? I was raised primarily by my mother. My mother and father divorced after they left the reservation. How old were you at the time? Oh, probably about four and a half, five years old. Oh, I see. There. Are you close to your father? Uh, my father's passed away. Were you close to him before you? Fairly, I got close to him as I grew, grew in age. Um, I went to a university in Texas, and he was living in Houston at the time, so we got close afterwards. So what, did, what is it that a Rastafarian is doing for you that Christianity didn't do? Um, it helps me to sort of understand the weaving of both politics and religion are inextricably bound together, where there's a tendency in... Western religions to separate out Christianity from politics, but they're always intertwined. Some, like Catholicism, they're able to mask politics from Christianity a lot better, but Rastafarians are pretty upfront in understanding that Christianity and all religions, by and large, are inextricably bound with politics. So if you are high realizing this, how do you know what you believe is right? Well, you don't. That's why you're always questioning your beliefs, right? How do we know anything, right? So that's the fundamental question. The problem I think that many people have in the world is, is that they never question their values, right? You definitely should question things. Right, absolutely. Do you have conflict, inner conflict? Yeah, I think all people have inner conflict. And you right? have it? Yeah, sure. And what causes you a conflict? Oh, I think on a daily basis, right, selfishness causes conflict, greed causes conflict, hate causes How about conflict. Your, so My personally, yeah, I'm susceptible to all of those. I'm so a human being. So you're selfish and greedy and... Oh, yeah, absolutely. I am a sinner. Are you married? Oh, yes, I am. You're married? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You have children? Wonderful uh, wife. Is she Kelly a Russian parent too? Oh, absolutely not. Oh, she's not? <laughs> no. What is she? Uh, what do you mean? Is she a she, she's... Catholic. Oh, she's a Catholic. Mm -hmm. Is she black? No, she's white. You married to a white woman? Yeah, absolutely. Do the uh, black an, people an know Iri that? An Irish woman. Does your black history class know that? Oh, absolutely. What do they say when they see that you're married to a white woman and you're teaching African-American mm, studies? people think that it's an inherent contradiction. Some people don't care. It's all over the map. That's amazing. Yeah. So you have children? Uh, yes, we have children from separate uh, previous marriages. Oh, you've been married before? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. How many times have you been married? Uh, twice. Amazing. <laughs> you find that to be amazing in American <laughs> society? I, I mean, I, I don't know, but I just to suspect that you probably were married once. No, life. all my kids are out of wear a lot. Oh, yeah. Okay. I did it the right way. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I do have a son, but he was born out of wedlock. Okay. And yeah. I realized that was wrong, so I never did it again. Well, yeah, I think as people get older and mature, they look yeah. back on their lives and see relationships, et cetera. And I, I think that's a part of growing up. And How growing. many children do you have? Uh, I have personally two children. So one by your first wife and one by the second one? No, first, both by the first. Oh, I see. Are mm -hmm. you close to them? I'm fairly close. What's wrong? What do you mean? Why are you really close? Oh, I, right, I have two girls, right? I, how close can a man truly be with two, two women? What do you mean by that? Well, I just think that there's a, I, I don't know, maybe there's a natural separation between seeing young girls grow up and 
I suppose to having males. I'm not really sure because I don't have a son, but I, I'm just imagining it. I Did don't your know. ex-wife turn them against you? Um, I wouldn't say that per se. Did it happen? Um, I think we had disagreements about how they should be raised, but I wouldn't characterize it as such. You weren't saying that she turned them away from you? Well, I would say that largely we have always disagreements about how children are raised, yeah. right? I think that's pretty normal and natural. So can we say that she turned them away from you? Um, I wouldn't characterize it as that. I think that's... Why not? Well, I think everybody, right, has their own way of looking at things. I wouldn't characterize it What's as What's the difference between, is there a difference other than body parts? Is there a difference between men and women? Um, I believe so, but I'm sure there is. What's the difference besides body parts? Um, I think, well, for one, I think women are socialized differently than men. That's one. And I think that there are some inherent psychological differences between women as they are born. Meaning that they're crazy? No, I, I would say that maybe women can be a lot more empathetic than men. I think men have a general tendency to lean towards violence than women. But don't you agree that the violence that you see in a man came from a woman, his mother? Um, I'm not sure if I believe that or not. Why I not? don't know. Men I just don't. I don't. actually violent. It came from a mother. I don't know that. I, I, I personally don't know. I, I haven't done any studying on that particular. Just my own sense, I think men tend to be more violent than women. But that's because they hate the mother, so they hate women. And they can't deal with them, so they beat them up. Oh, well, I, I don't know. Have you ever beat a woman? Have I ever beaten a woman? No, of course not. You no. told Hoppo to beat me. You know. <laughs> no, I haven't personally. Oh, you haven't? No. You felt like beating one? Um, have I felt like beating a woman? I don't think I've ever gotten to that so angry that I've wanted to beat up a woman. You thought about beating one? Um, no, I don't think I've ever Did thought about, about beating, beating, beating up your a woman. ex-wife? Like, no. Oh, you didn't? No. So let me ask. Um, you teach African American studies at LACC. Yes. Right? What do you teach? Um, about I, to I them? teach a course in African politics, um, African American history, and and what I teach them. I primarily I'm looking at teaching them about how power works. Give me an example of that. So, how do African Americans find themselves in the condition that they are in America? Right. So. If we look at all the major indices, right, whether it's health, wealth, et cetera, we have to ask ourselves, right, how did African Americans find themselves in this particular position? And you say? So we look at systems of power to sort of pull all of this stuff out. And so how did most, not all, not all, but most black Americans end up in such a negative condition? Well, I think without generalizing, we can say that sure, racism was an integral factor Meaning in the condition of African Americans. And we can also say that it's probably a, a largely due to slave culture, right? Really? Is, yeah, oh, yeah. There's and probably, what is racism? Well, I, I think if we were to define it broadly, some people would say that racism is discrimination, prejudice, against a certain group of people based on their skin color, but I would argue that that's probably a muted definition that we would have to add systems of power in that definition because I can like, dislike someone just because they have a size 13 shoe that w we may call prejudice, but as long as I don't do anything to you, there's probably really no harm in that. But if I'm able to keep you from having a job because you have a size 13 shoe, that's probably right, would be, if we were to extend this to race, that would be racial. So who is stopping black people from having a job? Um, I would, that, that's really a very strange question because I wouldn't know the circumstances, right? I mean, what do you mean by that? Because you said racism is the power kind of. Yeah, there, there is a power dynamic that pre has prevented African Americans from achieving the same level of success as, say, whites. And I'll give an example. So if we were to add up the median income of African Americans in the United States, broadly speaking, it would come out to about $3,000 per family. If we were to do that for whites, the amount would be about $100,000 per family. So then how would you then account for the disparity in the amount of financial acumen or resources that a white family has versus a black family. So who's stopping black people from achieving those things? 
Well, if we were to look at this from a historical standpoint, there have been a number of significant studies that have drawn this out. For example, Kenneth Hamilton's study on white wealth, black repression, where he clearly outlined how in one particular Texas town, after the Civil War, whites m moved physically and with, through laws to prevent black people from gaining resources, right? So who's stopping black people from achieving financially now? Today? Um, that's a really hard one, and I think it's somewhat of a loaded question. Um, so if I'll take myself, for example. I think that I've made some fairly decent decisions in my life that have led me to have some financial success. And I think it's all predicated on the fact that I had a really decent college education. And the decision to go to college was my decision, right? So, but I can't speak for everyone, right? I, all I can under, understand is that I think America is designed in a way that prevents a lot of African Americans from achieving the same kind of advancement that the white community has. Who designed it that way and who's oh, stopping them well, today? Well, whites have designed it that who's way. Who's stopping Let, them Let's today? not get it twisted. Whites have designed the system so in a way that- So are whites stopping blacks today from being successful? In some cases, yes. I'll give an example. The way school funding, right? So we look at school funding. School funding is predicated on zip codes, right? So if you live in an area that has high incomes, you'll necessarily go to a school that is well-funded. So we know that we can fundamentally understand that. So the proper way to do this would be to apportion the school funding so it's even-handed. So we take a little bit of money from a wealthy community and spread it to the poorer communities, but that kind of, that doesn't happen. I happen to know that black schools are getting more money than the white schools are because of the uh, black politicians and white people are afraid now, and yet the blacks are turning out screwed up. Why is that? Um, I didn't say that. You didn't say what? I, I didn't say the blacks are turning up screwed no, up. No, I said it. Oh, I said, okay. and yet they're turning out screwed up. So they're getting the money going well, to I'm, the schools. Well, I'm not so sure. I mean... That they're screwed up or that they're getting the money? Well, I would say this, that there are some inherent problems within the African-American community, and not all of them can be attributed to certainly to the white community, but a great number of them can be. I'll, I'll just give you a, just a, 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 an example of this. I went to a historically black college in Texas, Prairie View A&M University. Oh, I'm familiar with that. And Prairie View was founded because the whites in Texas did not want black students to go to Texas A&M. So they founded Prairie View, and what they systematically did for its existence since 1876 is they underfunded the university. They did this knowing that even under Jim Crow, the idea was separate but equal. They had separate, but it was not equal. Black so people so just, just to, to keep going here, just, yeah. just for a moment, the, the answer to that is, is that I know a person like yourself could not think that that would be anywhere fair, nor would you probably want to say that those students receive the same type of quality of education as those students who went to the all-white Texas I happen to think that it's perfect, that if that happened, that it happened that way, because when it, people are not supposed to take care of you, you're supposed to take care of yourself. And I happen to know that in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, if somebody refused to give you something, you go out and get it yourself. It brought out the best in black people. Yeah, sure. And because I grew up on a plantation in Alabama under the Jim Crow laws, and because blacks didn't rely on the whites or begging someone for something, they had family, they worked hard, they created their own, they were doing quite well. It wasn't until they start begging and blaming yeah, but you can't, with the you, civil I, rights movement that they but became I, weak and pathetic. But I know that you're not trying to suggest that life for African Americans was some type of a utopia in, in 1870. Well, I don't know life about 18, for most black people was a living hell. I don't know about 1870, but I know about from 1949 to this day, it's been paradise for blacks, but they're so angry and demoralized they don't realize it. I will concede that I think that there are some black people who are definitely angry, and there's good reason for it. There's never a good reason to be angry. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask, if black people did what white people did, 
and the Jews. W which Let, is? If they had, got married, instead of oh, having 70% okay. of the children out of wedlock, if the mother stay home and, and deal with the children when they go and come from school, the father provided. If they set a good example for their kids of working hard, treating people the way they would like to be treated, not blaming at others, would blacks be well off today or would they still be in this hole uh, that I, I don't know how to answer that question because I think the African American experience is unique. I mean, what other racial group had organizations that were designed and built specifically to kill them? No, I'm asking you. I, 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 a I mean, whole we could, lot of other ones. Yeah, we could say probably in Nazi Germany, certainly the Nazi regime was designed in a way well, to exterminate Jews. Well, white people have been too, and they're doing quite well. Where's that? But I want to go back where's to that? my question. Wait a minute, but where's that? They were enslaved in this country. They have been enslaved In this here country? Before. Where? Oh, yeah. There were white Who? slaves as well. Who? But let's go back to the Wait question. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. White slaves I want to go where? back to the question. You didn't answer my question first. Okay. If I'm... black people didn't have 70% of their babies out of wedlock, and they loved what was right and did the right thing, got married, set a good example, taught their kids how to work and be responsible, uh, treat people the way that they would like to be treated, would they still be wimping and whining and begging and blaming about 18? I don't know. Today? You're making the assumption that inherently there are some of these things that black people don't do. Certainly there is a problem of out of birth, uh, out of babies being born out of wedlock, but that's symptomatic of the white community. But we right? talk we, about we the see black. that. I think, but I the think whites the highest, are not begging and blaming. It's I, the blacks who are begging and blaming. Well, I, I wouldn't characterize it as begging and blaming. What I would think, you call it? I, I'm not sure how to answer that. What I, would, what I would argue is I think that there is an argument within the black community that there is a debt that is owed to black people. Amazing. So I need to go back to my question because you didn't answer it yet. Yeah, because I'm not sure quite how if to black answer people, that. black people did what the Jews are doing, the whites are doing, and others, if they got married, they set a good example for the kids. The father went out and provided for his family. They taught the kids to work and be responsible. Would the blacks be in the situation they're in today? Okay, I would argue that your question, just as, as its surface, is a somewhat loaded question, and I think the bottom baseline answer to that would be, of course. Right, we would. So why not teach them to do that? I, who's not teaching spending, them to do that? Uh, are you teaching them that it's not the white man? And you guys are doing it wrong. I teach my students that every person has a responsibility to do for themselves. But are you also teaching them that the white man is trying to hold them back? I'm not teaching them that the white man is trying to hold them back. I am telling them that there are institutions and patterns of racism that are embedded in the fabric of America that will at times challenge you. Do you tell them that white people are racist? Um, I tell them that there are racist people in America. Do you tell them that those racist people are white people? No, I do not. So you don't say white people are racist? I tell them that there are racist people in America. And who are those people? Um, they could be just about anybody who has power in this country. If someone has the ability to deny you a job based on your skin color, they probably are racist. So I hear that the Jews have a lot of power. Are they racist? Um, I, some could be, I don't know. I so, don't know that for a fact. But they have a lot of power. Yeah, if a Jewish person denied you a job based on your skin color, that's probably racist. So do you agree that they have a lot of power? Well, some Jews do. Some and black so, people have a lot of so power. Some Jews, white people have a lot of power. Are those Jews racist? Which ones? The ones that discriminate against you the because of your skin power. color? No, not because they have power. Are white people who have power? No, not racist? because they have power. Okay. They're, uh, um, it's changing a little bit, they're trying to change it, but light-skinned blacks discriminated against dark-skinned blacks. Some of them won't hire them. Yeah, we have uh, a colorism are issue. Are they racist? Um, well, I would say that if a light-skinned black person had the power to deny you a job, they probably might be racist. If they're doing it because you are a dark-skinned black person, they probably are racist. So anyone black who- people, Black people, if they have power, can be racist. We can see this in Haiti. Do you believe that uh, all white people race it? Or just oh, absolutely some? not. Oh, okay. Your there wife... are some really good people of all races. Oh, okay. The, no. Do you tell your class that? Oh, absolutely. And so um, when I was growing up under the Jim Crow laws, blacks did better then because they believed in God. 
They got married. They had, you know, they took care of their families. The parents and grandparents were around. They did much better then. They bought land. They created their own schools. They came back as professionals. They were doing better. And they were not blaming anything well, on well, white well, people. I would... They were not blaming anything on white people. What was... What was the difference then and okay. now when they got I, I, all the freedom now to do whatever they want? Okay, now they now I think I understand a little bit better where you're going with your argument. Then this is where I will concede. I think that there is one essential thing that black people, I think, don't talk about a lot, and that is after the Civil War, black people really did have to depend on themselves. Um, and I think people like Michelle Alexander will concede the idea that before... Um, we had desegregation, full-blown desegregation. There were a lot more black doctors. There were more black engineers, more black lawyers. Um, I think black people were, there were a lot more black professionals, leaders in their communities. And I think but after... But we're not thinking of, don't believe Michelle, she's, she's not all there. Well, I think her statement, no, I think her she's statement wicked. is absolutely right. She's and I think pure, she would back you up no, on well, your she, assessment. The way she presented as the white people was... Uh, well, I'm, I'm not speaking people. about her, her entire argument. Oh, I'm okay. just talking about the <sighs> argument here where she makes the argument that before desegregation, before we were blacks were quote-unquote allowed, there were time, more black doctors, more black I lawyers. I know, but at that time, black people were not into black. They were doing it because it was the right thing to do. Yeah, that's They were that, decent I, people, so they just well, I don't took know, care of decent. their families. They took care of themselves. They went into, oh, I got to do better than the whites, or the whites are trying to hold me back because they were taught to treat everybody the same. Well, I think black communities. Like to be I think black communities were more unified, I think, to some degree. No, they weren't unified. I would, that, I would argue because so. Because if you were a bad black person, you can't hang out with the other black people. I well, remember I, I so many times when know. if the parents were bad, the, my parents would say, you can't hang out with those kids. The parents are no good, so the kids are no good, too. And they were black. It was based on right and wrong. Well, that's color. what I was taught, and I, right, so I don't know. I mean, my parents, my mother was old school, right, from that's Texas. Right. So, <laughs> you, you so why can't you guys go back to teaching that rather than all this phony racism stuff? Well, I, I mean, I, I hope that you're not trying to concede the idea that racism doesn't exist and that it we doesn't. shouldn't be teaching. You're saying that racism does not exist? Not at all. <laughs> it has never existed. It's a made-up lie from the children of the lie to control the masses. Uh, our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a battle between right and wrong. So uh, and let those me see people if I got who are this. teaching racism... Okay, so let me see let if me I just have... This okay. first. Those people who are teaching racism are evil people. And they're trying to control the people by getting them to believe a lie. So let me see if I've got this right. You're making the argument that the idea that there are people in the world who are discriminating against you based on your race does not exist. We all discriminate, and it's not based on race per se, but it's based on the character of the person or your, so you're desire, saying, or your desire for what you want. So you're saying those guys carrying tiki, tiki torches in Charlottesville, Virginia, yelling Jews will not replace us, those are not racists? You mean the, the guys in the mask? The, the no, mass, the guys right? who were walking around Charlottesville, the campus, and they were yelling Jews will not replace us, burning tiki torches. They were not racist. If, I don't remember that, but if it happened, it was evil, not racism. Oh, well... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I believe that racism actually does exist. It doesn't. Do you discriminate? Yeah, I think I do. And are you a racist? No, I have no power. So, so you don't have power. No. But you discriminate. Yes, and it's of not course. racist. N no, because I have no power to discriminate. So are against you saying anybody. white people who don't have power but they discriminate, they're not racist? That's correct. Amazing. How did you come up with that? It's fairly standard Were knowledge. Were you taught that in a school or something? Um, no, it's something that I've come to understand about reading it, and contemplating. I have to tell you. As you would say, reasoning, getting high. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get high every day? Uh, no, I don't. How often do you get high? Uh, maybe once a month. Oh, I see. So let me ask. Um, I say that there's no such thing as racism, sexism. That's crazy. No sexism, homophobiaism, Islamophobiaism, Debbie Dadism white supremacism, no isms. 
It's, okay. it's, it's only good or evil, right versus wrong. Okay. Am I, mean, I wrong? That's an interesting worldview, but okay. Am I wrong? I think you are wrong. Why? Um, I think that there is, history clearly shows that there is a pattern of racial ag aggression You've been lying against you. black people. You've been lying well, By whom? By whomever you've been reading about or you heard just mess around. So you, you're, you're, I think that the average person on the street, if you ask them if racism exists in the world, they would tell you yes. You're telling all of us. I, I would contemplate that there's got to be seven billion people on the planet. And I would say at least three billion of those probably would be able to exercise some judgment. We're all wrong? Yes. <laughs> okay. when, when I was blind, I thought racism exists too. When I came to California and started listening to the lies from the intellectuals, I thought racism existed too. So the but when I started was thinking, preaching, preaching when I started evil. thinking for myself, I realized that it was all lies. So when the Klan says that black people are inherently intellectually inferior and ought to be wiped off the face of the earth, you're saying that that's not racism? It's not. It's just... It's evil. Okay. If they believe that, that's evil. It's wrong. Okay. Is that possible? It certainly is evil to me. So when black, when black lives, you know that organization, that radical organization, Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I wouldn't describe them as radical. They are very radical and evil, uh, and they were founded by a bunch of black lesbians. <laughs> okay, when, I think they are, when but they were, when they were chanting, I don't see anything wrong with that. When they were chanting, what do we want, dead cops, when do we want them now? I think Was some that people, racism? I, I don't think any of the founding members of Black Lives Matter oh, shouted yeah. that. I think Was some that of that racism? I don't see how that, how is that racist? When they were chanting, what do we want, dead cops, you don't see that as racist? No, how, is, how do those people who have Black Lives Matter have any ability to affect the lives of cops? So when they were chanting, what do we want, dead cops, when do we want it now, pants in the blanket, frown like bacon, and people start going out killing yeah. cops. Who you went out and killed cops? Black people started killing cops. Well, you don't remember that? No. Oh, yeah. All, <laughs> Texas and all over the place. And you don't see that as racism. I, I, there, there, to me, there is no direct correlation between what anybody said in a Black Lives Matter rally and cops being shot. You're not shot. being honest. I would say that I am being factual. And so how is it that you... So you say that's not racism. To no. Be, is it racist to chant... What do we want? Dead cops. When do we want it? No, now? because cops can be black as well, right? Amazing, so if but black they weren't lives killing matter, black cops. They were killing white I, I don't know that to be true. And when they were saying pigs in the blanket, fry like bacon, bacon, is that racism? Um, I wouldn't say that that would be true because whites say that as well. So how is it that you see the Klansmen, what they did as racism? But you don't see the radical because blacks Klan as people racism. knocked on black people's doors and killed them. So that's because why, of the color of their skin. There so, is a va vast difference. So we saw cops being killed as a result. I've never seen chanting. one single cop ever be killed. Do you know about the cops that were killed by a black man in Texas? I know that there result, are co oh, lots of what black cops. Lives matter I, I was a military police officer, so I know that being a policeman is dangerous work. Right, so that's I, amazing. So I am the first one to sit here and say that it's tough work, but I don't. You know. don't see it as racist. I no, I do not. Amazing. Multiple degrees, right? Yes. And how many do you have? Um, six. I, well, six. What are the, What are they? Um, I have degrees in architecture and civil engineering, um, public history, uh, theology, African American studies, another degree in history, and a PhD in history. And so you're a preacher? No, I am a theologian. Oh, uh, what's the difference between a preacher and a theologian? Um, I don't proselytize. I study religions. Oh, I see. And so, being a black man, how were you able to do so well, but the other blacks are complaining and... My mother had well? a college degree. My father had a college degree. And so that causes you, because your parents 
was a good example. My parents told me when I was really young, you're going to college, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. So why not teach that to the other blacks I think, who are complaining? I, th I think every black person should look at their young child and tell them they are going to college. What, what's the point of walking around the world uneducated? So why not tell them that rather than promoting this phony idea of racism? I think that it, it's sort of the Japanese have a saying, benbuichi, pen and sword and accord. You can do both. Um, do you believe that, um, do you support abortion? I support a woman's right to choose. And meaning that she has a right to kill the, the man's baby in her womb? I say that a woman has the right to make decisions about her body that a man simply shouldn't have the same rights over that woman. You, I, and me personally, I don't like abortion. I think that it's inherently something that I have trouble with, but I am willing to concede the fact that a woman has a right to choose. And so you're saying that she has a right to kill the man's baby? No, in, in what I am saying that a woman has to make a decision for herself and I shouldn't um, have any right to, to tell her how she should live her life. But isn't that your child she's carrying? Um, if that would be the case, yes, and I would think that and Do the, you have a right to tell her you can't kill my child? Oh, yeah, you have the right to say it. But it's her body. Why do you have a right to do that? I, you have a right to say it. But then, She doesn't have the right. The, no one has to force her to listen. Do you, when you uh, receive your the, theological degree or something? Yes, I went to the University of Notre Dame. Did that enhance your relationship with God? I think that it made me fundamentally aware about the lapses in my own particular faith system. Do you support homosexuality? I support everyone should have the right to be as they are. But do you personally think that is right? To be a homosexual? Or a lesbian? Uh, I think that if that turns you on, man, live and let live. Do you personally think that is right? Um, I would, that's kind of a hard one to say, because I don't, yeah, I would say, yeah, probably. So you personally think? That two people ought to have the right to be who they are No, as do you personally think that homosexuality is right? I, I'm getting lost in your- Is it your, normal? Oh, is it normal? It's been around since the dawn of man, so I could see why it would not be normal. Is right? it normal? I, I, I don't know what a person is going through who is a homosexual. Do so you I would say if they felt normal, then it's normal. Do you personally think that homosexuality is normal? I think that it is normal. Right? So you if, personally think? Yeah, that I think so. And so right, obviously people are engaged in homosexual activity. So and that's, that's why you think that it's normal? Yeah. There are people murdering other people. Is that normal? I think that, that it, our society has dictated that that is an anathema to society and we ought to stop it. And do you think it's normal, personally? What's that? To murder someone. I would say that human beings have been murdering each other since the dawn of man and as a society we come together to put prohibitions on murder. And do you think that is normal? It, it is a normal part of us being a violent species, yes. Do you think that murdering someone is normal? Murdering someone in a society? No, it is not. You but we do make allowances no for it in society, right? We have wars. You, do you love War white people? War is murder. Do, do I what? Do you love white people? Do I love? I love everybody. How about white people? I love white people, black people, brown people. How about white people? I love everybody. How about white people? I love white people as well. Do you love white people? Yes, I do. Uh, okay. Do you love Jews? I love everyone. I love Jews, how, blacks, How about white. the Jews? I love everyone. How about the Jews? I love Jews. Okay. You made a YouTube video in, on the black man's Bible. Yeah, the Holy Pibby. What is that? Um, this was a proto-Rastafarian text by Robert Athelie Rogers, who was trying to, in the early turn of the century, the 1920s, pull black people away from traditional Christianity. So he wrote a Bible that he had hoped would give black people a sort of a... An, a hint or an idea that we ought to manifest our own gods in our own image. Amazing. So how is it different from the regular Bible, the Christian Bible? Well, how would I would argue that what Rogers would say is, is that in the Christian Bible, we, um, it's not 
wholly dedicated towards black people, that black people needed their own theology. So what is it other than needing God and a family? What is it that, I mean, that's what everybody needs. Why is that different from any other need? What do they need? They need black people need a family when they're growing up. They need perfect parents to guide them in the right way to go. Sure. That's in the Christian Bible. That doesn't apply to black people? Well, sure it does. So why this man had to write a different black Bible? Well, the argument would be that black people were given Christianity through the slavery. And so... Do you believe that argument? Uh, well, of course. Really? And, yeah, and, absolutely. And so was that wrong to teach them about God through slavery? Um, I th don't necessarily think that it's wrong per se, but what we can infer is that black people were forced into the religion, and so, that was inherently wrong. Black so, people being stripped of their own personal religion and being forced they, to be... What was that personal Oh, lot, lots of different religions. Indigenous religions, for example, Ifa would be a religion. Is Islam there, would be a religion. But Islam is an evil religion. Uh, I don't agree. You know? So if black people have another religion, why didn't that religion and why is it that that religion is not working for them? Because either? white people told school, black people, if you don't convert to Christianity, we will kill you. That's amazing. You really believe that? Oh, absolutely. Who told you? Who wrote this book? <laughs> what do you mean? Who wrote What's the name this of the man book? that wrote this Bible? <laughs> who wrote this book? This is pretty fairly well common knowledge. Who wrote this Bible that you're talking about? Uh, Robert Athley Rog Rogers, the Holy Pibby. What's his name? Robert Athley Rogers. Where is Robert now? He's passed away. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So, um, are you a Hebrew Israelite? No, I'm not. I'm a Rasta. What do you think about the Hebrew, black he Hebrew Israelite people? I think it's interesting that they've interpreted um, several thousand years of religion for their own personal uses. I don't have a problem with that. Do most black people think for themselves? Um, I would hope they would. But they don't, all right? Well, I think that we are all bombarded with information and it's hard for people to kind of pick and choose what they should believe in from day to day, right? Some sometimes things are foisted upon us that we don't even realize, right? But you do notice that most black people do not, they think like, they let other people think for them or they think in group, they say the same thing, do the same thing, act the same way, and they hate the same people. Well, black people have a tendency to think in somewhat of a, we don't all think the same, but I'll, for example, I think where you're going with this is that most black people tend to be Democrats even though black people are inherently probably more conservative than white people. In so, what way are they conservative? Well, I think they are conservative in terms of uh, religion. Black people tend to be more religious than other groups in the United they, States. They do, you're right, they do sing about it, go to church, but their lifestyles say that they are not. Um, well, I don't know who would those people would be. Well, right? most black people hate white people. They blame I everybody don't else. That. They you want really to believe that. They you believe that preaching. most black people hate white people? Without a doubt. Do you really believe that? What, what do you think of Kanye West? I, I particularly like Kanye West's music, but I think that Kanye West has fallen off the wagon. I don't know what he's doing. And, fall off the wagon in what way? Well, yeah, I mean, his complete and total movement towards some form of strange Christianity, prosperity gospel, I think is abhorrent. abhorrent. So do you think... Is he real about it or is he acting? I, I don't know. I don't have any idea. I think that Kardashians ruin people, so I don't know. I would suggest that probably that has something to do with it. So <laughs> even though he is bringing other people to God, young people all over oh, the that, country. Oh, that definitely is a beautiful thing. But what his motives are, I have no idea. His motive is to bring them to God so they'll have well, better lives. Well, I, I think only Kanye could ask her. Would it, I'm not in a position to do talk about another man's motives. Do you doubt that that's what motives. he's doing, bringing people to God so they can have better lives? I blaming. really don't know. I think that there's nothing in his background that, that would suggest that that would be the case. But who knows? Amazing. Maybe he's honest. Are you a conservative or liberal? I am inherently politically liberal, but I think in terms of my overall outlook, I'm fairly conservative. Real men are not liberals. How did that happen to you? <laughs> How did it happen to yeah. me? Oh, the beta male is a liberal. How did you become a liberal? How did I become a liberal? I think my parents are politically they were politically liberal and socially conservative. I know that your parents broke up, divorced when you were young. Yeah, so did you become like your mother? 
I, my political views are probably more like my father. He was conservative? He was socially conservative, but inherently politically liberal. Was he, oh, he was a liberal. Oh, I'm sorry. Politically a liberal. I, I, you, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> he wouldn't agree. I am really sorry. Do you love the Great White Hope? Uh, in ter the Great White Hope, in, yes. in terms of the idea of a Great White Hope, like no, a s the real deal. Do you love the Great White Hope? Who is the Great White Hope? The president, President Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> you got me on that one. Um, <laughs> I thought you were about to tell me some overweight boxer, right, who claims to be, who claims to be Irish, who gets knocked out in the first round, right, and. And as I hear from Nancy Pelosi today, that might exactly happen, right? That's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. Mama word. They're dealing with a real man. They're dealing with the real deal. That's I, not I, I don't say anybody who avoided the draft because they had bone spurs in their foot is a real man. Oh, so you would say Obama wasn't a real man? Uh, I would say that it's far better to um, not speak and have people think that you're an idiot than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. So would you I say don't know whether or not Barack Obama is a coward or not, but, I certainly, but I certainly think would that... Would you say that he's not a real um, man? He you do not say. have to go to, to the military to show your courage, but well, you certainly, that claiming that you have, certainly claiming that you have bone spurs so you don't have to go says a whole lot Are about you. Are you a socialist? Um, I have socialist leanings, yes. Meaning what? Uh, there are things about socialism that I do like. Like what? That people ought to have a right in and a say in the work that they do. What do you mean by that? That people ought to have a right. I don't know if uh, am I. Socialism is free stuff. People. No, socialism you. isn't about I giving anything free to anybody. People. I don't know where people get that about socialism. That's but what it is. There, there is no socialist country on this earth that you can just walk in and say, where's the free stuff? In America. <laughs> where? They, black people were getting free stuff for the what, last what, 70 years like or so. Like what free stuff? Everything. What free stuff? What is it that I don't pay in? So what affirmative it, action. Affirmative action is free stuff? Food stamps. We're free for them, but not for the working I, I class. Tell, I'll give you a perfect example of affirmative action policy. It's called the Rooney Rule. You, do you know what the Rooney Rule is? Patrick Rooney? No. The Rooney Rule is, is that in professional football, if a professional team is getting ready to hire a new coach, they have to hire black people. Or not hire black people, they have to interview black people. At least one black candidate. That's not a good rule. The reason why they have that is because if they didn't have the Rooney Rule, teams would not interview any black people at all. That's not true. Really? So then why, why do they have the rule? Why do they have something they don't need? Because, um, yeah, show me white something in the world are, that you have something you don't need besides your own. The are only afraid, thing that you have that white you, people are afraid to stand up to the black. The so only thing the black, that you have on it. this earth that you don't need is your appendix. Is um, free stuff good for the soul? It depends on what it is. So, and there's love if it's free, that's really good for the soul. Amazing. Do you um, believe that black people should receive reparations? Yes. You know, why they didn't earn it, why should they receive it? I think working on those plantations for 400 years is... None earth, of them worked on a plantation. Er, ...earned enough. What do you mean? None of them worked on a plantation. I didn't particularly work on a None plantation, but I had ancestors who did. None of the blacks who were begging I've for had it. ancestors who did. And how much should they get? That, I have no idea. Amazing. I don't know, but we can determine a reasonable amount. Let's do this. Let's. Would you be in support of... Endowing black colleges to the level of, say, Harvard. No, they've already overdone it, done it with the black schools. They've Let me done it? Say, You're I saying they've done it with you. the black schools? Let me, they've given them too much. <laughs> I noticed that black people who graduated from black colleges yes. don't donate to those colleges. They do not. And, and why is that? Um, black people are not taught at black universities and colleges the need to give back. So why don't you people make the blacks give back? We, I've been trying to do that at my own university. Okay. So I got to, um, I'm so out of time here, but it's time for me to put you on the hot seat. Okay. So what I needed for you to answer these questions very quickly. Okay. Just, I'll do my best. Uh, <laughs> you're, a t you're a tough interviewer. I am? Oh, absolutely. In what way? <laughs> you ask uh, poignant questions. Oh, amazing. But I can take the hot seat, I think. Uh, the hot seat. Would you ever get plastic surgery? No. Which is better, I already know your answer to this, but which is better, communism or capitalism? 
Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. Does climate change exist? Yes. Amazing. Is it racist for a black person to wear a white face? Um, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's racist. I would say that it's probably stupid. For a black person, is it racist for a white person to wear a black face? I wouldn't say racist. I would say it's stupid. Is, is uh, Colin, Colin Kaepernick a, a good football player? A good football player? I, I saw the last video of his trout, yes. What? Yeah, you're saying good football. Can he throw the football? Yes. Is he a thug? Well, no, he's not a thug. Why would he be a thug? Is it ever okay for, uh, uh, to tell a woman she's fat? Yes. Do you wish you had white privilege? I think every black person wishes that they had white privilege. Do you wish if you I had, had white, white privilege, I'd be a U.S. senator today. Do you wish you had white privilege? I, yeah, sure, why not? I'll take white privilege, why not? I'd probably be a senator. Are people born homosexual or do they become homosexuals? Um, that is, the, some of the latest su uh, evidence suggests that people uh, become, but I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm not a psychologist. I don't know. Are black people good at driving? <laughs> <laughs> good at driving? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Are white people in South Africa being treated fairly by the blacks? Yes. Is it fair to steal their land without compensation in, in South Africa? Um, that's a hard one to answer. I've been to South Africa, so I know a little bit about the country. Um, probably the answer is no. I, I don't really know it fully enough, but just so off the top. So it's not fair for white people, black people to be taking their land, the white people land without compensation? I would say that compensation would be fair. Uh, is it fair to kill white people in South Africa by the blacks killing the whites, robbing, raping, and murdering them, even in their home? I, is that fair? I, that's going on there? Is that fair? I think it's wrong if it's happening. I don't know if that's happening. It doesn't sound like it's happening. I appreciate you taking the hot seat on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell the folks how they can get in touch with you, your website, you know, YouTube channel, whatever you're doing. Yeah, my website is Dr. Gabriel, D-R-W-G-S-I, um, or thepeopleshistorian.com, and you can just Google me. I'm at Los Angeles City College. Did you have fun? Oh, absolutely. All right. right. I went to, did I tell you I went there once? To the L.A. To City College? Yeah, yeah, for, for about one a year, year. For one year. You know why I did it for one year? Why is that? I, I had just come from Alabama, moved here from Alabama, and I wanted to get a white girl. <laughs> okay. And so I got me a okay, white girl. Okay, so let me ask, do you had success? I, I got the white girl, and I dropped out of school. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, Mr. you're welcome. It. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet, share, ring my bell, and all kind of good stuff. We have the merch and everything, all right? So let me hear from you. Thank you again for tuning in. Next time on The Fallen State. Washington, thank you for coming. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me. How many men have you had sex with? Two men to count? Like, if you work at McDonald's, you're probably not tallying the days and how many things you've, you how know, many done. How burgers you're making. <gasps> right. Have you ever performed with women? I do have sex with them. You yeah. have sex with women on woman thing? <laughs> I sure do. And so are you a lesbian? Lesbian. I'm a bi bisexual. Not so much in my personal life, but on film. I definitely act with women, and I enjoy it. Did you have fun? <laughs> a little bit of fun, but it was also pretty nerve-wracking. I've been practicing meditation and I just wasn't ready for this. This is wild. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show. <laughs>